Hi, and welcome back to the Shane Plays DC Comics uh, Rebirth Review Series. We're going to review five comics tonight. The number ones and one-shots for Rebirth are slowing down now that the majority has been put out, but there's still a few more. Um, I'm actually not quite sure how many more we have. I, I would imagine I'll be doing at least one more of these videos, if not more. Um, but we are kind of approaching the end of the of the number ones and the one shots. So uh, let me know if you've enjoyed this type of content on the channel. Um, it doesn't get as many views as some of my other stuff, but it does seem to get a, a steady amount of views. And, and I don't mind doing it if 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 there are some out out uh, some of you out there that would like me to keep going. So, so let me know in, in the comments of the videos. I've had some feedback that I, I think some people do like them. So I, I really appreciate that. Want to hear from you. Uh, but, you know, leave leave me a thumbs up and maybe a comment on YouTube. Um, you know, even if you don't like it, you know, let me know. So, um, but I've enjoyed doing this as, as something different. I'm also doing a, a review series on IDW's uh, Rebirth, of, or not Rebirth, uh, Revolution event, which is also not a relaunch, uh, but a uh, status quo kind of reset where they're bringing all the Hasbro title Hasbro licensed character titles together in one big shared universe uh, with a sort of storyline that ties them all together but anyway we're here to talk about DC Rebirth so first we've got uh, DC Rebirth Trinity number one okay again remember with the logo up here this is the number one of the ongoing series not the one shot if it's a one shot it'll have it the logo down here so uh, with Trinity, we just got a ongoing series. We did not get a one-shot, so there wasn't a one-shot that established a status quo to build an ongoing series off of. Uh, for the most part, I did like this issue. Um, it's it's basically, if, if you don't know, this, this Superman in the current continuity for... Um, DC Comics is not the new 52 Superman. The new 52 Superman died a few weeks ago, like right before Rebirth happened. And the pre-New 52 Superman, the pre-Flashpoint Superman, the Superman that fought Doomsday originally, that Superman, the, the post-crisis Superman, if you will. Wow, all these lab labels that you have to throw around there to keep continuity straight. The post-crisis Superman from the 80s, mid-80s onwards, up until Flashpoint, I guess, is now, because of Convergence and the fallout from Convergence, which was the big summer thing a year or two ago that wasn't that good, frankly. But one thing that good that came out of it was that Superman is now in DC continuity again. And he, Helm and Lois are married. They live under the assumed last names of the Whites in upstate I guess New York, it just says upstate for Metropolis. Um, and he has a son, Jonathan, or John, who is displaying powers. He's half Kryptonian, half human. So the Superman books are kind of interesting right now. Uh, and, and one of the dynamics is, you know, this Wonder Woman and this Batman know each other very well. They've known each other since, you know, New 52 began. So they've always known each other and worked together. Um... This Superman, in their eyes, is somewhat of an unknown quantity, almost an interloper. The Superman they knew and were friends with, and in Diana's case was her lover, is dead. Um, and, and now here's this new Superman that they don't know if they can trust or not, and they're trying to get used to, and he doesn't know if he can trust them or not. So this, epi this <laughs> issue is kind of funny. It's about a, a dinner Batman and Wonder Woman come to dinner, um, basically as Diana and Bruce Wayne, but everybody knows what's going on, um, and they have dinner with Clark and Lois and Jonathan, and it's an interesting issue, not the least of which is Jonathan accidentally blasts Batman with his heat vision when he's answering the door, um, but, but there's some other interesting things, uh, that I liked, uh, it, it, the art was very good, let's see who's the artist here, I think there's a uh, Manu Paul, M-A-N-U, um, M-A-N-A-P-U-L is doing like the writing, the art, and everything. Yeah, the script, art, and cover 
uh, or Francis Manupol's Manupol, uh, and, and it looks like that that person Francis is also doing the coloring. The only thing that um, they didn't do was the letters and the variant cover. So uh, I like I liked the art. It was at times almost Darwin Cookish. Uh, uh, who's the other guy out there that does the um, Ian Doc Shaner, Evan Doc Shaner, that kind of thing. But there was a pretty wide range to it. And they're kind of leading up to something's not quite right. Here in the last page, um, I don't know if you'd be able to see that or not, but, but Clark is looking back at his younger self through the barn, and his younger self is looking at him. Uh, and everyone's kind of like, oh, what's going on here? Um, and another kind of neat thing that they did in this issue was this is the Rainbow Batman, which is one of the crazy Batmans from, I don't know, the 60s, 70s, 50s. There was all these crazy Batman stories. And Clark tells the story. He's like, I know who you are, Batman. I know that deep down you're a caring person. And he relates this Rainbow Suit Batman uh, story because in that case he was trying to draw attention from Robin, who had broke his arm. So he's trying to take in, attention off Robin and only onto Batman. And Batman's like, I have no recollection of this. And he doesn't, because that's a whole other continuity and timeline, best I can tell. So it was like a touching moment to say, hey, I, I know you're a good guy, Bruce. But at the same time, Bruce is like, I don't remember that. Like, I'm not, are you sure I'm the person you think I am? And are you the person that I think you are? And that kind of thing. So there were some neat moments in here. Uh, they also address that, you know, Lois and Clark are married in the continuity they came from. And in this, in New 52 continuity, Diana and Clark were lovers, which I prefer. I, I, I think that's a better relationship. I always have thought that was a better relationship than Superman and Lois. But, you know, maybe I'm in the minority. But I was actually kind of like, yeah, I'm glad y'all did that. Because it's always seemed dumb to me that that Superman and Wonder Woman wouldn't be together. But that's just me. You know, maybe that's the touching human side of Superman that he loves Lois and, and all this stuff. I, I don't know. So, uh, overall, I liked this. I'm looking forward to reading more of it. I liked the art. I liked the storytelling. I like how the uh, creator, Francis... Uh, Manipul man, is, is telling the story and doing the characters. So, and I like the dynamic that it, with the new 50 or with rebirth in the new 52 with Batman, Wonder Woman, um, with, um, Clark and Lois being from another continuity and they have their son. And like right now, Clark isn't at the daily planet. There's this whole other Clark Kent. They're like, who is this? And, you know, they're, they're hiding as the whites, and, and it is very interesting. So I, I, I hope it's not just the shock of the new that makes it interesting. I hope it'll prove to be interesting as, as, we, as we move forward. Um, so, yes, Trinity, thumbs up. I like it. Uh, Teen Titans Rebirth, number one. This is a one-shot. Okay. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Pay attention to the logo. It's like doing this in a mirror. Um uh, it basically, it's it's bringing the Titans together, the Teen Titans. So in 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 Rebirth forward, you have the Titans and the Teen Titans. Maybe it's been like that in the past, but it's definitely like that now. Um, and and the, and the the Titans are you know like Nightwing and uh, Donna Troy, Speedy, you know Roy Harper. Or, um, uh, to some, some other characters that are, you know, that used to be sidekicks and now they've kind of become their own people. Um, this Teen Titans is Beast Boy, uh, Kid Flash, Starfire, I think Raven and, and, uh, Damian Wayne Robin. Who well, I like, I like Damian Wayne as Robin. I didn't think I was going to beginning but now that you've got batman has his son as basically a sidekick and now you have superman and his son basically as a sidekick in the mainstream ongoing dc continuity so that's kind of cool um so basically what happens in this uh issue 
like I said, remember they established the new status status quos in these one shots. Each character, other than Damian Wayne, that Robin gets two or three pages or a few pages to kind of introduce who they are, what they're about, and then they basically get uh, ambushed by a dark, mysterious figure, and and so that that happens with each character, and then they all wake up. Um, and you can kind of see that they're captured. Very much reminded me of the Incredibles when the Incredibles were all captured in that movie. Um, and they're like, hey, and, and, and it's, they make it obvious that some of them don't realize, you know, don't recognize each other. Um, let's see. Yeah, like Garth, there's a scene in here where Garth, who's Beast Boy, is like, who, who are you anyway, and where are we? So it's like, I don't know how many of these characters already know each other um, in the new 52 continuity, which is now basically Rebirth continuity. And then at the very end, um, the mysterious figure reveals himself to be the Damian Wayne Robin. And I think that big beastie he's with in, in the Robin DCU, the bat girlings, let's throw at the wall and see what sticks stuff they did for not even quite a year. You know, Robin was running around with his big beastie. I think that's the same beastie. He had like his own pet monster. So I think what's going to happen here is Damien is basically going to say, hey, we need to be a team. And I just wanted to show you all, you know, how somebody could take advantage of your weaknesses and defeat you. And, and let's all work together. And let me teach you how to be more effective. That's what I think how this is going to play out in T -Titan, Teen Titans Rebirth, uh, number one, the ongoing stuff. That's what I think is going to happen. And if I was the other Titans, or what are soon to be the Teen Titans, I'd be pretty miffed <laughs> at Damien. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens. It, it was okay. It, it did a good job of introducing each character. Like, hey, let's give each character a few pages and then move on to the next, move on to the next, move on to the next. And then, boom, here's the big reveal. It's Damien, who I, I knew it was going to be Damien. Um, you know, it was pretty obvious to me that it was going to be Damien. Not, not the least of which is the cover. It, in his batterings, you can see the reflection of all the other Team Titans members. So, anyway, it was okay. I, this is one of those issues. Hey, I'm glad I read it for a completionist rebirth thing. I'll read the number one, of course, of the ongoing series, and then we'll see. But right now, I don't, I'm not sure I'm a lock-in on Team Titans. I am a lock-in on Titans, mainly because they seem in Titans, as I've mentioned before, to uh, be telling more of the mystery behind Rebirth and the what everyone is assuming to be the Watchmen being involved with the DC Universe now and editing out several years of time and, and rearranging things. So, uh, all right, Batman Beyond Rebirth number one. Again, one shot. You can tell by how the logo is. Um, it, it was a good, solid story. It, it basically now I have I've watched some of the Batman Beyond cartoon, um, uh, you know not even a complete first season of it, but I watch it progressively here and there. I like it fine, um, you know, and it, this is obviously in that same world. Uh, you got Terry McGinnis, um, you know, as as Batman Beyond fighting the Jokers with a Z, the big gang of Jokers. Um, and, and then, you know, you have the, some of the characters that I already recognized. Um, now what seems to be a reset or a change on the status quo, evidently Terry McGinnis was dead for a while or believed to be dead. Um, and then now he's not. So the, you know, they, they kind of talked in here like Barbara Gordon is the police commissioner. You know, of course the daughter of James Gordon, she was Batgirl, Oracle, all these things. Well, now she's the police commissioner. And there's some discussion. She's like, good to have you back. Um, you know, have you told certain other people that you're alive yet? And, you know, Terry's like, no. Um, it kind of recaps a little bit in the story, the origin of Batman Beyond, how Terry met Bruce Wayne and became Batman Beyond. Um, and then it ends with uh, basically teasing that the original Joker may still be alive and being kept alive. And the overall story arc and the villains and the stuff that's happening are um, 
all involved in trying to bring the Joker back or keep him alive or so like the, the crimes that they're stopping or trying to stop are involved with that. So again, it was solid. I've never been a huge, I mean, Batman Beyond's all right. It does. It's never really felt like Batman to me. Um, Batman, when Batman shows up, you sh- the, the criminals should basically poop their pants, right? That's the, the like Batman will beat you down and outthink you but his whole concept is I'm going to try to psych you out and freak you out before I ever have to land a punch. This Batman has never struck me as terrifying or scary. Uh, and the way they set up Terry McGinnis, he's a high school student. Bruce Wayne is his mentor. He's running around trying to figure out the bat suit. It's always struck me as more of a Spider-Man vibe than a bat vibe. So, uh, you know, I, and so that's that's my own bias against um, I, I, against this Batman. I guess he doesn't seem scary Batman like like Bruce Wayne to me. He's cool. I mean, the the costume's cool. Don't get me wrong, but it's just never really felt like you know criminals or cowardly and superstitious lot and all that. So, like I said, it, it feels more like Spider Man in a kind of a armored gizmo suit kind of thing terry mcginnis he's got girlfriend problems and high school problems and he can't have a social life bruce is always making him be a superhero that kind of thing so but now in this bruce is gone i i think bruce wayne in this they he's gone i'm, I'm guessing he's dead now um and so we'll see i'll, I'll give it at least another well, I'm going to give it the number one ongoing issue, no matter what. And I may give it beyond that just to see what it does. But in the pre-rebirth stuff, when they were doing the DCU, you know, let's throw everything out there and see if we can get to stick. Jason Todd, I think, evidently had come forward to be um, Batman Beyond. So I, I think that's what happened. I, I, I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Cyborg number one. This is number one of the ongoing series. We've already done the one shot. Uh, it, interesting story, you know, they, they finished the one shot with him struggling with, am I real or am I Memorex? Am I really Vic Stone? The real Vic Stone, the soul of, you know, Vic Stone, or am I an entity that isn't even really alive that thinks, has been programmed to think that it's Vic Stone? So he's struggling a lot with that. And there's a wonderful scene in here where he goes, he or he's taken to a jazz club, and he listens to jazz music and talks to one of the jazz musicians, and you know they talk about spontaneous music and humanity and the enjoyment of music and, and those sort of things. And I thought it was done really well. Um, and then, of course, just because you have to have superhero action um, at the very end, and I never know how to say the, I don't know if you say it the Kilgore. Uh, I don't know if you can read that. It's K-I-L-G percent R-E, the Kilgar. When I was a kid, when they showed up on Flash, the Wally West Flash, when he became the Flash after Crisis, I would always say the Kilgari. But it, maybe it's supposed to be Kilgore or Kil, Kil percent R-E. I, I, I don't know. It's supposed to be very you know computery and cool. Uh, so the, the Kilgore shows up, um, and, and it looks like there's going to be a rumble you know, at the, at the beginning of next... Um, next issue, Rumble, Young Man Rumble. So, a good solid issue. I, I Again, I don't know if I'm going to keep going with Cyborg or not, because Cyborg is, is one of those characters that, for better or for worse, whether it's fair or not, I just don't see as carrying their own series. We'll see. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to pick up more issues of this. But I might, you know, may spontaneously pick it up off off the shelf. So we'll see. It was solid. None of these five issues that I read for this review were bad. I, I think that Rebirth overall is doing a very good job of storytelling. Um, you know, probably my least favorite was was the Teen Titans Rebirth, just because I thought it was so dumb that you know Damien is like oh, more you know reveals himself at the end and I've ca- captured you all. I just thought that was kind of dumb. But maybe I'm not the demographic. There's probably some 13-year-old kid out there. This is amazing. So, you know. All right, finally, Blue Beetle, number one. 
uh, ongoing series. We've already done the one shot that established that Blue Beetle, uh, you know, Jaime or Jaime Reyes, I think, and and Ted Cord, the old Blue Beetle, are working together. You know, uh, Ted Cord, sort of the mentor. Jaime's doing the heavy lifting in the suit. Uh, and, and it was good. I, I'm probably going to keep going with Blue Beetle just because I'm a Blue Beetle fan. Now, I prefer the Ted Cord Blue Beetle. Uh, got really into him during Crisis. He was introduced to the first issue of Crisis on Infinite Earths, that, that version of Blue Beetle anyway. Um, and, you know, kept up with him in Justice League and uh, his own series. Was still, I think, is so dumb that they had... Um, I don't know if it's Greg Ruka. I don't know who it was, the writer that that had Maxwell Lord blow his brains out. It's just that's not what you know. On a certain level, four color mainstream DC Marvel, those comic books should be fun on a certain level. You shouldn't be blowing people's brains out. But but anyway, that's a rant for another day. Uh, hold on a second. Sorry for that noise. Um, but anyway, so I'm very glad to see Ted Cord. And, and I like, I don't have anything against Jaime Reyes, but I, I, this whole, you know, the power armor thing, I'd rather have the other Blue Beetle, but having them work together is a fun dynamic. One thing I didn't like about this writing on this issue, and it's Keith Giffen that wrote it, you know, I, I normally like Keith Giffen, but he's got this banter going on between Jaime and his two best friends, who's a, a guy and a girl, and then also this banter going on between him and Ted Cord. And it and it's done in little caption boxes and everything. And it, I don't know if you can kind of see that there. These little uh, cat caption boxes and the way they're talking. I just it just didn't flow well for me. Half the time I didn't understand really what they were talking about. Uh, they're like they were it's supposed to be kind of cutting each other down in a loving, friendly or that that kind of friendly, you know, that you only do with your friends. It, I just didn't like that. I hope I hope he doesn't make a habit of that throughout all of his issues. Um, one thing I did like is they introduced, and maybe they've been around before. This is the first time I'm familiar with them. It's a street gang called the Posse that is a superpowered metahuman, if you will, street gang. Uh, and and the way they come, they're not really bad and they're not really good, uh, but they kind of show up at the end. Uh, and that's the Posse. They're sort of a superpowered street gang, and I um I kind of like it. You know, I think it's kind of, I think it's, for Jaime being a, in, you know, in, in high school and whatever, and, and I think it's a good set of possible allies or potential enemies to introduce, but, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. But overall, you know, another solid issue I could have done without the supposed witty banter, um, you know, and, and so there, I'll go through them again really quick, um, Trinity, really liked, um, artistically, story-wise, everything. Definitely looking forward to reading more. The Titans Rebirth, I'll read at least the number one of the ongoing series, but this time I'm not really sold on, on going on with it indefinitely. Cyborg, solid issue, but again, as I felt when I read the one shot, probably won't keep going with it after, well, this is the number one, so there's a good chance I won't keep going. Uh... Batman Beyond, I'll read the number one of the ongoing. This is the one shot. I'm kind of potentially thinking maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll see. It, it has potential, uh, you know, I, I just don't know yet. Um, but this issue was pretty good. Uh, and then finally, Blue Beetle. I, I love the Blue Beetle, both of them. I really love the Ted Cord Blue Beetle. Uh, I like the character of Jaime. Um, so we'll see. Uh, well, no, no, we won't see. I'm, I'm, I'm in for a few issues uh, until they, I get like maybe a terrible story arc or something. But I'm in. I'm in for now. Um, I think. I think it's. I think it's pretty good stuff. So, thanks so much. That's where we're at on this review series. I don't know how many more we'll go. I'll have to look up and see how many more Rebirth issues, number ones, there are coming out. I don't think there's a whole lot left. Uh, but we should probably get at least one more video, I'm assuming. So I'll catch you next time. Uh, please leave this video a thumbs up and a comment on YouTube. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching Shameplate.